Hey, what's up? I'm Andrew with Field Treasure Design. So for years as a part of our woodworking business, we sold two time zone clocks and wood prints all with a custom object or place painted on them like a state, a country, an animal, anything that you could make a silhouette of, we pretty much put it on wood. And so we painted them on using our custom stencils that we made. And last year I sold them all, but then I thought, man, it'd be really cool to teach you how I made them. So I made another one right here. I made Texas and I'd love to show you how I did it. So check this out. Out. The first step I did was to get on my computer to grab an image that I wanted to print. I do a quick Google search of whatever I'm thinking I want to make. So in this case, I'm going to use the shape of Texas. So I type in Texas, and I like to type Texas silhouette. I found that that helps me find the image that I would like to use. Usually using silhouette or outline helps a lot. That way you find the image that's good. You really don't need all the extra fill. You notice there's other shapes that have black and blue. You really don't need all that. All you're looking for is the outline. And it looks like I found one here. So I'm gonna take that image, I'm gonna drag it over to my Word document or your Pages document. In my case, it's Pages. So now it's just a matter of sizing the image to the right size that you want. And then I always center it on the document. That way when I go to print it on the stencil sheet, it's gonna be on the center. And I'll show you how that helps later. Before we print, we need the right type of paper. So I use Duralar stencil sheets. It's .005 matte film. Since they come in packages of nine inches by 12 inches, they're a little bit bigger than an eight and a half by 11 piece of paper size. And so to allow them to fit in my printer, I just use a piece of paper to trim it down to the right size toss the page into the printer, and in this case, I'm using a Brother laser printer, and it works just fine. Back to the computer to print it out. And just like that, there it is. Now, I used a laser printer, not an inkjet printer. You can do an inkjet, but it might smear. Now comes the fun part, actually cutting out the stencil. Now, I'm using a stencil cutter, which relies on heat to cut through the stencil material. So, something has to go underneath it that will absorb the heat and not scratch up. The good news is, is I found the perfect solution. All you got to do is grab an empty or old picture frame and pull the glass out of it. This is a perfect working surface for cutting out a stencil. I've also got a straight edge just in case I have any straight lines I need to cut. The stencil cutter I'm using is made by Wall Lank. I'll have a link to it in the description below and on my website. I put some athletic tape on it just to help with the heat on the hand. And now it's just a matter of following the line. It's pretty sweet to do. Here's a detailed shot to give you a better idea of how it looks. It's actually pretty relaxing. In fact, all of the stencils that we've ever made, I think I've cut them all out just because I love doing it so much. Now you have to be careful not to go too fast or sometimes you fuse the both sides back together, which means you have to cut it again. Now I grab my straight edge to help me out. Yeah, pretty clean. There was no way I was doing that freehand. Another straight line to finish the panhandle, and then we just continue on. Ooh, there's a straight line freehand. Maybe I'm not so bad after all. Now I just take it apart real carefully, making sure I don't rip anything. And there is a handmade stencil. Now we need to try it out. I grabbed a piece of three quarter inch plywood from my shop and then one of my favorite stains. I use weathered gray. For this, I just use a piece of paper towel, fold it up. It applies the stain, no problem. Done. Hey, P.S., here's a handy trick. When I'm done, I just hold the paper towel and wrap my glove around it and boom, all clean. Here's why it was important to center the image on the document. I take the middle of the piece of paper, so in this case it's eight and a half by 11, so the center of eight and a half is going to be four and a quarter. I put a dot at the four and a quarter mark, that way I know that that is the dead center of the document. Then I repeat the same process for the vertical center. In this case it's 11, and so half of 11 is five and a half. Now I've got a dot there. Now I'm gonna measure the center of the actual board and line the dot up with that center line. Having those dots on the stencil now are really handy every single time you want to center the object. Then I use a little piece of scotch tape just to keep the stencil secure. For the vast majority of our stencils, we use white acrylic paint. It works really well, it goes on easy, and then for my little palette, I just use a little piece of scrap cutoff wood. I then put a little bit on there because for stencils, you're going to want to dab, and this allows you to kind of dab the paint and then transfer it on. Now let's do this, put our stencil to the test. So that's the motion I'm talking about. It's kind of an overhead just dab. 
that helps control the bleeding under the stencil. And then I use my spare fingers to press down on the stencil to keep it as close to the board as I can. So that's the process. We have made thousands of stencils this way. Here's another angle. And this is the whole process. We experimented with lots of different methods. We even tried to spray them, but all in all, we found this was the best process. It's even and it gives it a cool texture. And the end result is awesome. There is literally no bleeding. And now it's time for the reveal. Boom, doesn't that look sweet? Well, hey, I hope this video was helpful and don't forget to hit that subscribe button to stay connected with me on all my future videos. Thanks.